My name's Alan Carter. I'm the president and CEO of Cabral Gold. We have an advanced gold project in northern Brazil called Cuyu Cuyu. We're currently doing a pre-feasibility study on the oxide cap to that material. We've got 1.2 million ounces indicated and inferred, and we control, a, control an entire gold district, which is right next door to G Mining's uh, uh, gold development, which is going to be Brazil's third largest gold mine. Alan, oh, good to see you, man. Nice to see you. Thanks for bringing the weather with you. My pleasure. <laughs> Thought you'd appreciate it. <laughs> right. We, we've got to be quick because you are back to back with meetings, which yeah. is great. It's a great conference. Okay, and you're meeting the right sorts of people. But in a way, in a meaningful way, we don't really care. You raised some money recently, didn't you? We have, yes. We've, uh, we've got about seven million in the bank, Matt. We've just yeah. done a, a royalty deal with the Cisco that put, brought in five million US. We already had about two and a half million in the bank. So, yeah, we're in a much better financial position than we were 12 months. Right. And, and what you're going to do with that is focus. You've got a dual track strategy going on here, haven't you? Yeah. So, yeah, where's that money going? The, well, the main focus is to get this pre feasibility study done. We've hired a Senko to do a pre feasibility study on the oxide material. So, this is just the weathered material. We've got 60 meters of weathered material, which is basically saprolytic mud, which contains gold. And because it's mud, the cost of mining this material should be very, very low. Right. And also, it doesn't need processing, so you don't need uh, it doesn't need crushing or grinding. Right. So we're doing a pre-feasibility study on that. That should be done by uh, January, and we'll use that, assuming we've got the project financing in place for construction decision, probably at March, April time. Okay, quick, quick, quick. Okay, and then and what about what that build period? period? You, you've always yeah. talked about it's a simple heat bleach yeah. process. So yeah, it's cheap. Yeah, it's quick. Well, we think the build time right now, and we'll see what Asenko has to say, but our estimates are the build time for the project will be six to eight months. So really, there's not a lot to it. It's a, it's a very simple sort of a, right. a, a heat bleach type operation. This is just for the oxide material. Yep. The big prize here is, as you know, most of our gold resources are in the hard underlying granite, the stuff that's not been weathered, and that would be the step two. So that's stage two. So the, the concept here, the idea and the strategy is to get into cash flow as soon as we possibly can by exploiting the mud or the satellite material on the top. Right, well, this, this is what's important. Like you, you had a really good run up until the mark, gold, silver, precious metal market got crushed. It was three years of just being absolutely yeah. abused, it's been tough. It's been really tough, right? And you need to change, you need to be agile, you need to adjust. We, we started off all those years ago talking about this massive district yeah. wide opportunity, you're delivering high grades, left, right, and center. All good, that had to change. So you're going after this to get near-term revenue and uh, I'm say, what do you, how, do you, how do you raise the money to get to the point where you can generate that cash? Because you're gonna have to, Five million to do the feasible so study is great. No, or it's one, one and a half million to do the pre-feasible. Right, so. okay. So we'll get you through to that point where you get an investment decision made, but then you have to go to market and raise capital. Not a lot of capital, but nevertheless. Yeah. Where's it coming from? Well, there's a whole bunch of people here in Beaver Creek. We've, um, we're talking to a whole bunch of power discussions, a lot of appetite for our project, because as I said, this is saprolytic mud. This doesn't require a big crushing plan. The, the initial capital that we're gonna, we're, we anticipate that we're going to need is going to be very, very low. Uh, we think it will have excellent returns, but we'll wait and see what Asenko has to say. So uh, all the options are on the table right now. I'm very optimistic, and obviously having $7 million in cash puts us in quite a strong position. It does. It's not like we have a million or half a million dollars in the bank and we're desperate for a project financing package. We've got some time. Yeah, no, no, no I, I, I get that. And I guess that you've kind of got a bunch of shareholders who are kind of eager for the Because you and I have been talking about this for about a year. I know yeah, you, you made the decision back then yeah. in the middle of a tough market. Yeah. You've now got the money. That was the hard bet. We've got the money to get the study done uh, and, right. and a lot more, actually, yeah. Right, okay. And we're talking about potentially, end of this, end of 2024, potentially you can start the whole process of actually generating some cash. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Things go your Yeah, way. if we're lucky, we'll be in production by the end of 2024. It might be early 2025, but yeah. um, we're timing things so that we can start construction during the onset of the dry season. Right. So, which starts March, April time. Okay, um, and uh, we should get it complete by the end of by November time uh, if all goes well. And as I said, that is assuming that the pre feasibility study is positive, and that we've got the project financing package in place. So those are the main priorities for us over the next six months: is to get the PFS done mm. and to and, and to ensure that it's you know. Okay, so you you got to be in the game to play the game. So you've you've done that with the cash that you've now got. What's your message to shareholders? Our message to shareholders is: look, we control an entire district which is immediately next door to G Mining's uh, massive gold development. They've got 2,200 people on site right now. It's gonna be Brazil's third largest gold mine. During the gold rush days, there was 200,000 ounces uh, recovered from the streams mm. on their project next door to us. Mm. Our project area, 
the, the small miners recover two million ounces, Matt. Yeah. We've got a footprint. Our footprint at, 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 at Kuyu Kuyu is not two or three times the size as theirs. It's ten times bigger than theirs. Right. So if that's any indication, we should have a lot more hard rock gold here. Massive upside. We control an entire district. And we've got this opportunity now to get into cash flow, get into production, albeit on a modest scale, um, in the very, very near term. How many reap ten alliance there? That Jim, they were they were on the show. They were the first people we interviewed this week. Okay, how many reap ten alliance in terms of what you said? They're next door. They're building a massive, massive infrastructure and, and facility and uh, and plant. Are you? saying they would come and buy you out? Are you saying, well, we might be able to use some of their facilities? Are you saying they're a JV partner? Or are you saying, actually, let's use them as an example of what we could be? Yes, it's more the latter. Look, I mean, I think, I think people will speculate all of that. I think it shines a light. This 500 million investment that they're making shines a light on the whole Tapajos. As you know, for years, I've been talking about the Tapajos, it's like the world's largest gold rush, but there's no big mines there. Mm -hmm. This is gonna be the first big mine and there'll be a bunch more. We think we've got the next one. So it, it really shines a light on that. And I'm seeing that at this conference this year, we've had to turn uh, people away. This, our schedule is completely booked. Mm -hmm. um, so I, it's very, very exciting to have, to be right next door to a big project like that. Obviously there are lots of, um, all the infrastructure they're putting in helps us. Power line that's going in, the new road, et cetera, et cetera. It's all positive. There's a whole bunch of mining contractors turning up in the local town that weren't there before. Permitting is going much quicker. Um, it's all very, very positive, Matt. That is. First things first, let's get those oxides out of the ground, right? Yeah. Let's, um, and this is something that, that you know, our, all, our, all four of the gold deposits that we have at Kuyu Kuyu are on hilltops. So, so there's quite a lot of thick material, thick of this sacrilytic mud. Um, G Mining's uh, project uh, was exposed in the street, but that's how we found it initially, myself and, and Dennis Moore, we identified it. So um, we've got all this oxide material, it's sitting there on surface, it's got gold in it, and, some are, and, and in some areas there's quite a lot of gold, fairly high grade. So we'll, we'll exploit that initially and, um, and get in the cash flow as soon as we can. It's an incredibly exciting time for us. We're a company that's in transition, $25 million market cap, seven million in cash, Enterprise value on a per ounce basis is, is about $15, $15 an ounce Canadian. <laughs> this is What's not to like. CEO, folks. It's going to tell it. By the way, everybody, I'm the largest shareholder in this. I've got $2.8 million of my own money into this, Matt, I know. as you know. I know. I know. Um, so, yeah, I'm you're excited saying, for all the right reasons. Uh, yeah, I know. Get on and do it. Apologies. Get on and do it. Okay, thanks for coming. We'll see you soon. Thanks, Cheers, man. Cheers. Bye bye.